Hello, everybody. Good morning. Okay. Sorry, had like a little bit of a late start. <laughs> My son locked one of the bedroom doors that all of his stuff is in to get ready for school. And okay, let the butter knife be a locksmith because I was not about to pay for no locksmith. <laughs> at seven o'clock in the morning to come open a door okay but um youtube youtube university definitely helped us out this morning okay we learned a couple of tricks to get into the bedroom door okay because jesus um so <laughs> this morning um i know this week we are talking about consistency right um and i felt that it's it's like we can't talk about consistency without talking about discipline right um, because consistency is the act of, but discipline is like the thing that's going to get you to being consistent, right? Like you have to be dis disciplined in building up consistency, right? Isn't it crazy? Like how it all kind of connects. I think of like, um, my son's like little builder blocks in a sense, right? Like it, it literally is all connected. So I wanted to talk about discipline. Um, and one of my favorite books that I like to read that, kind of talks about discipline um, is The Road Less Travel. I don't know if you guys read that book. There's a couple, it's it's a super old school book. Um, my husband got it from like a pastor friend of his like years, I mean, 10 plus years ago. And I just now started reading some of them because um, there's like different versions of them. Um, so yeah, so if you guys are interested in that book, it's called The Road Less Travel. It's really, really good. Um, but on there, it talks about discipline, right? And essentially, the idea, uh, this quote is from Scott Peck, um, without discipline, like we can't solve anything, right? Like discipline, um, building up that level of discipline, like think of it as like your glue, right? Like how good is your glue? Your glue? Are you using super glue? Are you using like Elmer's glue, like the cheap glue that the teachers used to water down and put on the desk during like, um, <laughs> during craft time, right? Um, but yeah, so we're talking about discipline, okay? And um, I was trying to gather my notes. Um, and it's so funny because this is like day, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm really losing count. I think like day six, do we have a day six of like having these 5 a.m. morning, these 5 a.m. morning meetings, okay? And I just, the guy was like, man, you know, this takes a lot of discipline. I'm like, you ain't never lied because when that alarm, that 4.30 alarm goes off, Lord, I just want to like act like I'm not, like I don't hear it, like I'm not even awake. Um, because when that alarm goes off every morning, I have two, 430, 440, because just in case I don't hear it, I have the power of choice to ignore that thing. And then, you know, send that infamous apology email. Oh, I'm so sorry for the inconvenience. I, you know, totally overslept, right? And of course it's five, it's 430. It's, they can understand that but I had to build up the discipline. So like this morning was the first morning that that alarm went off and I just like jumped up with like, not like, oh my God, I'm so tired <laughs> because I'm building up that discipline. And in the beginning, it had to be forced. Like I had to push myself out the bed. I had to, you know, like will myself out to do the things. But this morning it was like, oh, let's go 5 a.m. morning. I think we maybe have like two more to go, but um, but yeah, it, it has to be something that is developed, right? Um, and we are consistently having these meetings every morning at 5 a.m., but if I don't have the discipline to get up, then I, I'm essentially making the choice not to show up, right? Um, so this quote is in the book, The Road Less Travel. Um, and it basically states that without discipline, we can't solve anything, okay? Um, and I know that this can sometimes be harder for, where's my chapstick? This can sometimes be harder for newer entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs that are transitioning from nine to five, right? Because there's many changes um, in your routine that you'll have to adapt to, right? You go from a pretty, 
uh, relative structure from your day routine, right? To then making your own rules, <laughs> to like entirely being responsible for your own schedule, right? You know, it's, uh, I seen a quote where it was like, people leave their nine to five or like leave their 40 hour nine to five to go work, you know, nine to nine. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes people will assume that, oh, I get to have my own schedule. I get to do this. I get to be the boss. But there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that, right? And one um, main challenge is, is setting up your own deadlines, creating your own productive strategy around the needs that you need to be doing, which will then in turn um, ensure you your progress, right? And eventually be able to reach your business goals. But that's that's a lot of responsibility, right? Remember the definition of responsibility we talked about, being able to do all the things of all the things without somebody being like, hey, hey, you, like you need to do X, Y, and Z and X, Y, and Z, right? Being able to do those things without being in the presence of anybody. Now we talked about accountability. We have our accountability partners are awesome, but our accountability partners is not gonna constantly always be that driving force to make you do all the things of all the things. You have to build up that level of discipline to do that on your own, right? So that is why self-discipline um, is like that, that, that key key, okay? We talked about consistency is the key, but it, being able to develop self-discipline um, is a key skill that you will need to develop because it boosts your consistency. It boosts your daily productivity. It, it helps you achieve milestones um, in all your daily goals, right? So- I'm going to talk about some five different ways. Um, I had so many, but I had to narrow, had to narrow them down. And I was trying to figure out like the best ones that are the most practical um, and like the best ones that somebody can like literally put into action ASAP, right? Because the whole goal um, is for all of these talks to then start seeping out of us and we're actually um putting these things into practice in our everyday life, some, some way or the other, right? Testing it out. Does that work? Yo, Jazz, that was cute, but that didn't work for me, right? So figuring out what is best needed and how you can best utilize these things, right? Um, so um, self-discipline is literally just a practice, right? Um, so I tell my kids that I'm like a, a certified TV doctor, right? And they're like, no, you're not a doctor. You don't know what to do. And I'm like, they're, you know, real doctors. And I'm so sorry, Nikki, because Nikki is actual, like in the medical field. So this is nothing to say about you, right? But I was like, uh, all they, they're practicing too. Like they're practicing on you. So like every time you go to the doctor, they give you a shot that they're practicing on you. No, they're not, mom. They know what to do. I was like, they, this is their practice, right? And it really tripped them up because they're like, no, these are professionals. Now, yes, in order for them to actually practice on us, they have to have so many hours and they go through all the things, right? But I was trying to explain to them that essentially like nobody is perfect and in all it's all essentially a practice. And um, so just like a doctor, you know, and, and professions and everybody in their respective fields, they have to practice to get better, okay? Um, and the thing about this kind of practice of building this, um, it's not effortless, it's not effortless, it's not effortlessly, however, okay? It's not, it's not. You, you heard me in the beginning saying that I have to like, will, I had to willfully like push myself out the bed, like jump up. I read this book, um, 5 a.m. Club. Um, it's another one of my favorite books. And it talks about building up the discipline to wake up and start your day um, and to start your day at 5 a.m., right? So essentially, if you start your day at 5 a.m., that doesn't mean you're waking up at 5 a.m., right? And they said the best way, I'm sorry, the best way to build this practice is as soon as your alarm goes off or as soon as like, your internal sleep clock um, comes to that space to where like it, it can go into another one, like to just shoot up, like just to get up. Um, 
without question, without like, oh, okay, I got five more minutes. Let me lay here. Or um, I'm up, I'm essentially up, but I haven't got out the bed. I'm like scrolling on my phone, right? But it's say like to jump up, like immediately, because um, this is how you can help build up um, your endurance to, to build up this practice. So it's not effortlessly. There you go. That's how I said, it, right? It's not effortlessly. It's going to take some some hard force. Now it depends on. I'm not saying this for everybody. It's, for some, it can, can come easier to others, um, but you have to start doing it, right? And, and no matter what that start looks like, you have to start doing it because that's the only way you can practice, right? Kids have practice, but they have to like literally drive there to get there to perform the practice, right? And it can take a while because during this practice process, you are now trying to identify, right? We talked about consistency is a good way to analyze activity, right? You're now starting to identify your strength, your weaknesses, um, to know what will help you, what will not help you, what is meant for you, what is not meant for you, right? Um, this helps you to speak your truth, essentially, right? And address all excuses head on. Because now you know those areas and now you know those, those isms, right? So funny story, my son has this new little girlfriend, y'all, okay? I mean, she's a cute little girl, but she has this little girlfriend. Yesterday was Valentine's Day, right? Yesterday was Valentine's Day. This boy did not bring her a Valentine's Day gift. He didn't think to ask us to go buy him, even though in the years past he did. Um, and he was telling about the story and about, you know, what he got her or you know, about the, he made her uh, a paper flower, okay? I'm like, boy, you know what? He's like, mama, it's a thought that counts. I was like, no, there was no thought in that. <laughs> that. That kind of a thought was a reactionary thought. That was a rebound thought. That was, you know, post, uh, but take true ownership, right? Well, you know, he started making up all these excuses. Well, mom, I don't have a car. I don't have money. I'm like, well, when was the last time you ever had money <laughs> and didn't ask for something because you didn't? So like, don't, don't do that. Take ownership. He's like, okay, I forgot, right? So being able to analyze our actions and help face excuses dead on. We have to learn how to, um, goodness, I just said that, take ownership. We have to learn to take ownership over our own crap, okay? Like we make excuses so effortlessly and we can always find a way to justify them, right? But in all actuality, no, you forgot because you could have remembered, you could have reminded, hey mom, can you take me to go do this? Can you, can I, can you please, can I please buy this for her? Because you've done it in the past, right? And same thing with my middle son. I forgot to buy Day cards for his class. I can't be like, man, Jamal, you forgot to remind me. Okay. Some 10 year old kid that forgets to brush his teeth every morning. No, I have to then take ownership. I'm so sorry. I totally forgot. Oh, you know, and I can be like, oh, I totally forgot. I'm super busy. That's an excuse. Like, no, I just, I just simply forgot. I dropped the ball. So as you are practicing these, um, building up self-discipline, you'll be able to analyze, um, and, and address these excuses head on, right? This will help you to be able to build up that self-discipline because some things that you're doing, you're not going to enjoy. It's actually, it's gonna be a lot of the things that you're doing is not going to enjoy, right? But it would be better, it would be better to develop that self-discipline and actually take care of the task because you are running for the long game, right? You're running for the long game. This is not a quick, Raise. This is not a quick fix. This is something that you have to develop so that way you can build up the consistency so you can do the habits, so you can achieve the goals, right? It's that, that building block of a thing. So self-discipline needs to be practiced daily, right? Analyze your things, like set your goals. Like what areas do you find like you're so easily procrastinating in? What are things that you're so easily able to put off over than other things, right? analyze those things, face those excuses head on, right? Um, and then of course, give yourself some time to develop a system that works best for you um, because it's gonna look different for everybody, right? Um, my husband, 
like he has eight alarms. Okay. And, um, and then like, you know, his last alarm is a like super loud song and it really kind of like gets him out of his sleep. Um, or I have to force, you know, like it may look different for every single person, um, but give yourself grace to develop the system that's going to best work for you. But just make sure um, that you're honest with yourself, right? Make sure that you're doing the work, right? Um, one of the things that didn't go on this list I'm just going to go ahead and bring it up because it kind of just fit in there, right? You have to transform into being a doer, okay? Um, you have to transform yourself into being a doer, right? Um, I was reading an autobiography about this guy, uh, this business owner that um, started small, built a brand, then built up like to be like one of the largest uh, private equity firms. And he talked about, when he meets entrepreneurs, right? And of course they know who he is and that he has a small equity firm and he, he privately invests in small businesses. Um, and he says that when he's talking to these new entrepreneurs, if they ever use words as in, I'm planning, I'm thinking, I'm processing, I'm working, I'm about to start, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do. Those are like, to him, he said, those are all like key trigger words to to that this person is not a doer, okay? And he's like, you know, I could just have met them at the wrong process of their life and they could eventually be a doer, but most doers are going to say, hey, I am doing this, right? I am actively working on this, right? So it's important that you transform yourself into being a doer, right? Um, every week I, I send out this poll and I'm asking everybody that joins the Facebook group, like, hey, what process are you in, right? And most of them are going to say one. Um, and I'm asking, okay, you know, don't stay there too long, right? Don't, don't, because it don't matter how much research you do, like you will never internally feel ready. You'll always feel like, oh, I'm not kind of ready, right? So like, don't stay there too long, right? Like, what are, what are the actionable steps that you're currently doing in your phase one, right? Um, so it's important that we transform into being do doers. That is one quality that every entrepreneur needs because otherwise then we're just a dreamer, right? We're just, we're just a dreamer. And I don't wanna be a dreamer. I love to dream, but like I wanna put that into practice because dreaming is equally important right? To reach in our goals. We talk about having that vision, but you need to put the effort and, and the actual activities to do it because then you'll just literally just be a dreamer. You'll be that infamous shoulda, coulda, woulda person. So we have to become doers. And I'm so sorry, like I inputted that one. Okay. Um, <laughs> so there is this, this rule, this 80, 20 rule, and it's, and it's, it, People will use this rule in, in various different situations. This rule is used a lot for like social media marketing or marketing. Um, but I wanted to talk about utilizing this rule and practicing self-discipline um, with your workload with this with this 80-20, with this 80-20 rule. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna put this in circle as well. So you guys can kind of see what this 80-20 rule looks like. Um I really want to read uh, 5 a.m. Club, maybe the following book, because it has so many different rules like this, but it's super cool. OK, so one key challenge in this area is making sure that we are literally spending valuable time working on all the tasks. Right. That's actually moving the block. That's moving the things forward in our business to be able to essentially provide us with the quickest results. Right. This is why every time I end our call with B. Uh, productive, not busy, right? So using the 80-20 rule is a situation that could give you some really great advantages in perspective of trying to balance out your schedule, right? Because if you haven't came across this before, um, a lot of people use this, like I said, um, in, in like marketing and some other areas. Um, but the, the theory around it, right, is that most business owners will spend 20% of their valuable time working on their business. And the other 80% just, just 
you know, doing whatever. Okay. Similarly, like roughly like the 80%, 80%, um, of the results is based upon 20% of their effort, right? So your role as a business owner is to identify like the maximum task that you can do within, let me see how can I word this, the maximum task that you can do worth, so if you have 100%, you know, bring it down from the 20 to the 80, that you can focus on 20% of that, right? I think I'm saying that, right? Goodness, now I'm like, I had it so perfectly in my head, so let's say you have all these tasks, right? And this is going down from being busy, not uh, being bu being productive and not busy, but that you find the most highly productive task that you can do. So 20% of that going through your list and writing down 20% of that, that can actually overproduce what the rest of, of your task list will look like. Okay. Does that make sense, you guys? In my head, it sounds so much better, but I feel like I'm fumbling, fumbling over my words, right? Um, so basically, with the 80-20 rule, you want to put in 20% of strong, strong effort, okay? So, of course, over time, um, the desire of this is to flip um, to where you are putting maximum 80% because now you're able to tunnel vision, your focus, right? But in the beginning, as you are building up your discipline, you're building up, making sure that you are doing all the right things, using valuable work time, um, <clears throat> is to highly super focus on 20% of those tasks that you can identify that will be able to produce high results, okay? So for example, in the business, right? We know we have all these other things to work on, but essentially, if you don't work on finding cleaners, your business is not going to run, right? Mm -hmm. Or you have your cleaners, but essentially, if you don't learn how to maximize your mm -hmm. marketing efforts in Google or Google Ads or SEO or all those things, then you can have the cleaners, but not the not the business, right? So finding and identifying those high um, valuable times. Um, activity that you can work on, okay? Because it might sound difficult to be able to identify those things. In our business structure, is there's like the key main things, right? Um, um, it would be hiring, marketing, um, customer service, right? High level customer service for reviews. But those are, to me, those are the most, besides like the back end and all the other stuff, right? You need customers, you need clients, and you need good uh reviews right that is like the high circle of life for your cleaning business right so being able to identify those set things and depending on what level that you're at when you're starting your business or planning your business you still need to identify those high level of activity that you can do that's going to produce the results okay um there's been a lot of talk in the group this couple of days talking about VAs, right? And everybody's wanting to bring on their VAs, but it goes the same way. You also want to make sure that your VAs, that you can tell your VAs what are the important tasks that they're supposed to be working on that can produce their results. Because if they're just being busy, not productive, then you're essentially just paying for busyness. You're not doing the business, but you're paying for busyness, okay? So you want to um, implement that. I'm going to find like a better graphed for this rule um let me take a pause a, a pivot real quick mm -hmm. does that 80 20 rule for those that's on zoom does that make sense to you guys or do i need to like break that down some more y'all can just give me a thumbs up or leave it in the chat or for those that are on facebook does that 80 20 rule sound good because i implemented this in my mind <laughs> when I'm trying to explain this but for some reason I feel like I don't want it to leave you guys with more questions and answers Nikki gave me a thumbs up thank you on Facebook does that 80 20 rule make sense does that do you guys understand that does that give you guys some good understanding ah double sound give you guys some okay Awesome. Good. I'm, I hope it does. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, this is just like a rule that sometimes our newer entrepreneurs would use um, to try to help give them a high level of focus. Okay. Um, so 
after you figure out your most important task, now you have to schedule your most important task. Okay. Um, it's best to, if you can, to rise early. It's best if you can to start working on these tasks early because what happens, I don't know if, if it happens for, for others, but what happens for me is that if I don't do these tasks, if I don't have good time management, then I can get pulled and distracted into other things, right? But if I start my day early, right, I schedule my most important task in the beginning of the day, then I'm able to get more done and be more productive, okay? So let me kind of go over the, what this looks like, right? So <clears throat> we tell ourselves all the time, you guys ever tell you guys self, oh, I'll do it later, right? I'll work on this later. And then by the end of the day, <laughs> by the end of the, I had a situation last night, by the end of the day, I'm like, oh my God, I so forgot to do that, right? Because we tell ourselves that we'll look at it first thing tomorrow, and then we end up in this another repeat pattern of, oh my God, okay. I told you we got to do this morning. I have X, Y, and Z to do. I'll do it later today, or I'll do it after dinner. I'll do it after we put the kids to bed. And now what we're actually doing is we're building a habit of putting things off. We're building a habit of it being okay to address things later. We're building a habit of, not um, prioritizing things that need to be done, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there's this other book I want to read that talks about brain fog, because I think I get that a lot. You guys see me, I'd be like, oh, wait, I lost my train of thought, right? But <clears throat> but trying to um, switch that habit. I, I've always grown up with this. My dad always used to say, never put off what you can do today for tomorrow. So that has always stuck super, 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 super in my mind. So if I can do it today, I'm getting it done. If I'm like out the house, I totally maximize that time and get all the things done. I'm like, nah, look, I'm out the house. This is a rare occasion. Okay. I'm about to go to the bank. I'm about to do this. I got to go pick up the lawn, like all the things. Okay. Um, but I, I, I developed that habit, like don't put things off, right? Because now what that turns into is procrastination, right? In all actuality, it turns into procrastination because the task and the things are not going anywhere. They still have to be done. Like they're just going to be hovering over you like, Girl, don't forget about me. I'm like, I ain't gonna forget about you, right? Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm that friend, and I thank God that all my friends love me and know me. But <clears throat> I am that. Um, if I tell you I'm gonna call you back, that means that I'll probably talk to you next week. I'm, I'm that, you know, not respond to messages right away. And I know that like my text messages have a lot of other stuff, but like I literally have like over 500 unread text messages, like, because I'm, I'm focused on the priority, right? I'm focused on the task. So it takes me away from that. But, you know, sometimes what we don't know that we're doing is like, we're building these bad habits, right? Um, and sometimes we, it's not even knowledgeable. Sometimes we don't even know it, which is why it's so important to have self-awareness so we can then build up these things and break these bad habits and rebuild new habits, okay? So we wanna emphasize the importance of these tasks and the ability to make sure that you have prioritized them, okay? Each task, you wanna make sure that you have prioritized them, okay? And it's really best to have a good level of time management. Now, if you have a really crazy schedule and you have you know, the kids in the morning, the breakfast and the school drop off and they'll possibly go into your nine to five, then maybe you have to stretch yourself to wake up early, right? And then you're like, well, then girl, you're gonna take away my TV time. Well, then maybe you have to discipline yourself to cut back the TV time and go to bed early, right? Um, me going to bed, I like to go to bed at nine, 10 is my threshold, but I have to have a real high level of discipline to be like, hey, honey, I'm gonna have to turn it in tonight because- he is super like totally opposite of me. He's like, uh, I'll go to bed when I'm tired. Like I'll wake up in the morning and he, and, but he can also wake up in the morning with like no, with no tiredness like I do. But I have to be like, oh, honey, I have to go to bed. So I have to stop watching my shows. No sister tonight or 
<laughs> no 911, right? I have to discipline myself to go to bed because I know that I need to wake up early. So we have to make sure that we're prioritizing our full day. So if you can develop that, that level of discipline, you can develop your tasks and you can work in the morning and, and actually get your list of your most important 20% thing that's going to actually provide strong level of results, I strongly suggest doing it in the morning time, okay? As ugly as it feels, as ugly as it's as like, uh, I'm not a morning person, right? And maybe 5 a.m. is not your time. Maybe maybe that's a stretch because I don't I don't ever want to challenge those that to achieve. Remember, I always want to make some, something achievable, right? Because if you plan something that's unachievable, then it hurts your confidence. It help, it hurts your self-confidence. It makes you feel overwhelming. And then what ends up happening is like you don't, you can't stick to it, right? So you wanna you wanna create something that you can stick to and you wanna create something that you can build on. It's okay that you will start at 7 a.m. Like if you're like, yo, Jazz, I wake up at 10, like I'm gonna try eight. Okay, that's awesome. Okay. Like this is all what I'm talking about, like doing what's gonna work best for you. But being able to also routinely track your day, track your morning. Um, like they have all these tracker apps. Um, to me, they're a little overwhelming because I just keep forgetting to check off the doggone boxes, but it may be helpful for you, right? But being able to track um, the things that you're accomplishing throughout the day in the beginning of the day to build up that discipline to actually start practicing um, and increasing your productivity is huge. It's a huge thing because it helps you to analyze yourself because in our mind, we can be like, oh, I'm good, I'm good. But maybe if you track it for the next two weeks, you'll see that, oh, okay, I'm like at 70, 30. Like I'm not, I'm kind of, I'm kind of there, right? I'm not A1 like I thought that I was. And it's okay because that self-awareness will then be able to let us know where we need to work on, okay? So it's like when I first transitioned to be an entrepreneur, um, it got really overwhelming. Um, just the volume of tasks that I needed to get done. Um, it, I mean, it, it, it was kind of crazy in the beginning. Like my mindset was always, and sometimes is, is not enough hours in the day. Like always, always. Like my, my corporate background is in finance and banking and real estate. And every morning and every day and every other day, I had similar tasks that needed to be done, like clockwork, like nothing, I don't say nothing surprised me, but nothing surprised me. Okay. But when I became my own entrepreneur, when I came my own business, it was so different. Like I was literally feeling like I, 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 I'm feeling like I'm being pulled. I have all this list, like what's more important. I got to do this. This has to be done. Or I need to do this. Right. But having, being able to write out my list, um, prioritize my list, figure out that top 20% of activities that need to be, because then I'm not really worried on the other things. Like those, I'm going to get to those, but let me tackle this first, right? Actually being able to kind of mimic what worked in corporate for me and then applying it here. Because see, I just thought that entrepreneur was like, oh, wake up, you know, do this, get to my laptop, you know, and just start working. But then I was like, well, what am I working on? Like, I'm just just doing things. Like, I'm just chaotic. Like, I don't have no routine. So then I had to like stop. Okay, well, what did, what made it so easy for me to go to work in the morning, sit at my desk and start working on tasks? Because I, I, I routinely had memorized my my to-do list for every every single day looked different every Monday looked different but it was I had a list of different things that had to be done by certain times so I just mimicked that practice into my business to help me bring more clarity more focus right to help me essentially be more productive I needed to figure out a way to enhance my product my product god my pro productivity productivity goodness y'all got it <laughs> so I figured that increasing that morning routine will be able to enhance that. Okay. So um, one thing 
that I like to talk about is called habit stacking. Um, it's when, it's when like you pick a couple habits habits to start working on at the same time, and you're like making this sequence out of um, these habits, and then you're essentially building up a new sequence to become habits, right? So we talked about like all these things are connected, right? Um, habit stacking is like the best way to work on multiple things at the same time when they all kind of deal with each other. So if it's for you, if it's um, being more consistent with building discipline and waking up early in the morning, right? Or um, change early in the morning to um, creating like your, your productivity list, right? Those things kind of go together and you kind of, this one can be, you don't need these, but this one would be better with these, right? But with discipline, you need, con you need, con you need consistency to be disciplined and you need discipline to be consistent, <laughs> consistent okay? So habit stacking um, is like a, just a little cheat code to start figuring out the best way to implement these things in your life, right? It literally will just help you to adopt multiple good habits and to automate your behavior and to create these sequences without like you really even knowing you're doing it until you start seeing the results. Um, and then it helps you on your day to day and you have more intentionality and your tools that you have are just becoming more powerful because now you're like, oh snap, I'm like, consistent and disciplined and writing out this list, then you can add another one to it, right? Once you develop that, then you can add another one to it. Like, well, shoot, I've always wanted to try to start reading. Let me, let me add a read a chapter a day because you need the discipline, you need the consistency, right? To be able to start implementing, let me read a chapter a day, right? Um, the beginning of your day means that you started with the right mindset. If you start it with the right mindset that you're gonna focus on those essential things and achieving that level of discipline and having that focus throughout the day is a major, major game changer, right? Um, I like to start each day as like day one, right? This is day one for me. So it doesn't put me in the mode of, I failed yesterday, I'm gonna try today. Like nah, today's day one. You have that same level of excitement, um, that you did as in New Year's Day, right? Oh, I'm going to do all these things. It's day, day one. Um, and the last puzzle of this, because I know that sometimes adapting to new things can be overwhelming. Um, it just makes sure that you guys are not putting you guys self through stress that is not necessary. Have grace. Um, give your, allow yourself to, to have some grace through this. Um, it's okay to make a mistake. We're just practicing, right? We're just like just in the beginning, we're just practicing. Okay. When you go to practice, it's okay that you make a mistake. It's it's best to make mistakes in the practice. So when it's time to show up, you don't, right? But we're just practicing. So if you keep that thought, if you have that level of perspective that I'm just practicing, right? when you can see that you start doing these things now effortlessly, right? Then you'll know that, okay, I'm building this up, right? I'm working on these things for myself. And now I'm actually being able to see the results to where I don't have to have a, a tracker. Like Jasmine, were you productive today? Jasmine, did you wake up today? You know, like whatever, did I wake up today? You know, like you don't have to maybe do those things that'll help remind you because now it's just a habit and you're working on habit stacking and now you are implementing and you're growing and you're now you're seeing all these things, right? I was talking to my son. I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to wrap up. But I was talking to my son yesterday and um, he's a great singer, right? He's, he's, he has an amazing voice. Um, and he was like, you know, they were singing in class because he's getting ready to perform this song and the kids were like oh my gosh Shamir, I hate when you sing because you know you just make us feel you just make us bad like you know like you just sing you want to pop up and start singing and we don't know how to sing right and you're like man you know it's I'm not that good of a singer right and I was like don't do that don't do that right that's don't do that like that's false humility and he was like no that's not I was like he was like I know that I'm good 
um, I just, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not that good. Right. I'm like, okay, so you don't have confidence in yourself. And he was like, no, I have confidence in myself. It's just that I know I can sing, but you know, I don't really want to put myself out there and I don't want people to feel so like, so you're self-sabotaging yourself. And he was like, mom, you're giving me like all of these like negative things. Like, why do I have to be one or the other? I'm like, I'm just giving you definitions that are describing the words that you're saying. Like you're either saying that you have false humility to where like, oh yeah, I know I can sing, but you know, thank you. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> thank you. I'm not that good, but you know, I'm not that good. Thank you though. Right. Or you're self-sabotaging yourself because you know, you can sing, but you don't want to put yourself out there because you're afraid that you're not going to be received well. So it's better to uh, agree with the others that, yeah, I can sing, but you know, I'm not that good. Right. Or you don't have no confidence in yourself. And he's like, man, how can you just read me like that? And I was like, I can read you like that in those areas because those were areas that I suffered from. But it took me years and years of work and meditating and studying and reading to identify those areas in my life that I lacked in and that I needed to work on. It wasn't day one, but over time now where I'm at years and years three to four years later, I'm able to easily identify it in myself and I can check myself and then I can also see it in others. And that's when we know that we have grown in spaces to where now these things that we are working on in ourselves is just done effortlessly, right? We can self-aware ourselves and identify what we're doing. We can identify our tasks. We can identify when we're procrastinating because we now know what procrastinating looks like because we've practice discipline and consistency, right? Like we practice speaking um, positive words in our, to ourselves. So we know what it looks like to for our, our belief levels to be low, for us not to have no confidence, okay? So know that out of all the things that we're talking about, self-discipline is like neck and neck because you need self-discipline to have consistency, right? You need discipline to make sure that you can put yourself in check when you are showing low confidence, like, nah, girl, don't do that. Like, let's, let's speak, let's speak life. Right. Um, and it, it's really just all connected. And I want to, I want to talk more about that habit stacking. Can I kind of just seep that in without really talking about it? So I think I, we'll talk about that on, um, on Friday. Um, and it, it goes to that book, um, Atomic Habits. And that's a really, really popular book. I love that book. But that book is so awesome because it just talks about making super minor changes that can bring like atomic results, right? Um, because it's hard for ourselves to like, I've, I've been alive and, and working and doing all these things for decades, right? Not that many decades, but some decades. So I've built up like these habits, not even knowing. And now I have to like, change the way I think and change the way I do things and change the way I operate. Like you're asking me to like change the very person that I am. But if the very person that I am is not going to give me the results that I'm working so hard for, then am I my best version? And the goal is to get to our best version. So that way we can produce what we're working on. And I knew that that old version of Jasmine cannot produce what I'm working on whatsoever because I wouldn't even have the belief level to think that I could even achieve what I'm working on first off so then I would have quit I would have got overwhelmed and quit because I'm not producing the results that I wanted so um we're going to go ahead and wrap up this Wednesday um I hope this has been good you guys for those that watch the replay let me know what your guys thoughts on this let me know if you guys are going to start trying to habit stack yourself um, and if you're going to start habit stacking, like what are, what are your top three you're going to work on? Um, and I would even love to hear any feedback from those that's on Zoom. Like if you guys are here to start habit stacking, what would be your top three habits that you would start stacking like right now? Give me some feedback. Let me see what y'all saying on Facebook. And y'all can leave it in chat or off mute, going to bed early, waking up early. Yes. 
it's hard. It really is, especially as an adult. Like I ain't got no bedtime, but that's you yourself holding yourself accountable. And that takes some strong discipline. Okay. Especially like if you got a show that got like three episodes, you could shoot, not go to bed till two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> right. Literally, like it'd be two o'clock in the morning and be like, oh, I'm I'm good for one more. I'm good for one more. Let's say anybody else, what are like three habit stackings or three, two to three habit stackings that you guys are going to start working on? Talk to me, y'all. Let's see. Talk to me, y'all. Oops, sorry. Uh, let's see. Eden, what would, what would you say yours are? Or Teresha? I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start having you guys come off, off, so y'all can see y'all start seeing y'all faces this morning. <laughs> Starting my day early, Nikki, you be on time every morning, so I appreciate that. So, how early are you gonna start? <laughs> five a.m. Okay, I'm gonna text you too. I'm gonna text you tomorrow at five a.m. Because <laughs> I will definitely be up. <laughs> awesome that's really great you guys um and then hold you guys self accountable to these things okay because remember like I said that one that I squeezed in we must be doers okay like this time that you guys are, are investing could bring back an awesome return right this ROI could be like <laughs> compound to millions right? Like this investment could be compounded into mill. Like this ROI is like none other, um, but you have to be doers, right? Like we can, we can, it's like having like a good stock to invest in, but then like you, you going and listening to all the meetings and you're reading all the things, but you never actually like putting the money into it, right? Like how many people missed that Apple stock? Like when Apple first came out or when Starbucks first came out, right? We saw the news, um, so yeah, so let's start being doers and, and we'll really be able to see the return. Um, somebody said also wake up early. The problem I wake up, but I don't get out of bed and then I want to start meditating again. <laughs> no, definitely. And that's what I was talking about in the beginning, 5am club. It talked about the importance of when you wake up, literally like shooting out of bed, like don't give yourself a second thought like there's so much power in that I don't know there's some kind of brain activity that goes along with building that because in the book that we're reading right now um think and grow rich it talked about the importance of somebody being a quick decision maker like hey Jasmine you have option one or b or one <laughs> a or b read them and then being able to make a quick decision um and that one really triggered, like really, you know, got to me because I'm not a, I'm not a quick decision maker. Some things I am, if I already have knowledge on it, but some things I'm like, oh, let me ponder on this bad boy. Right. But um, there's, there's power in being able to make quick decisions. And like, when you get up, like shoot up. Okay. Don't rest. Um, I'm usually up, but I'm thinking about all the things I need to do. Uh, yeah. I do too. I do. That's why I have to like literally force myself, stand myself up, walk around, give me some water and then start the day. But um, this has been really, really good, y'all. Like always, it'll stay up in Facebook and then in Circle, it'll be added. Uh, and I'm going to find a diagram for that 80-20 rule so you guys can have a good visual of what that looks like. Um, and then I will see you guys on Friday morning. And also I'm going to make an announcement in the group because we didn't meet last night because everybody was all booed up right for Valentine's Day. We'll have our training on this Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right. So I'll see you guys Friday morning. You guys have a good day. Remember, be productive and not busy. All right. Bye, y'all.